Thrust reverser. Does it change the actual landing distance at all? Let's find out. Hi folks, how are you? Welcome to the Aircraft Performance channel. My name is Thiago Brenner and this is the first video podcast in English in this channel. Our topic for today is Thrust Reverser. Does it change the actual landing distance at all? Well, the short answer is it depends. It depends on two different things. First, are we using auto brake? And second, how is the runway condition? Well, let's start with the auto brake. Auto brake, when available in the aircraft, may work slightly different from airplane model to airplane model. But in general, it works like this. Depending on the level set by the pilot, there is a deceleration rate target that the system will try to achieve by putting more or less pressure on the braking line. To put this into perspective, let me give you an example. Say a given airplane has landed and the auto brake system of this airplane has a target of 7 knots per second of deceleration rate. Well, after touchdown, the brake system will put some pressure on the braking line to reach this target, say 2300 psi. Once the thrust reverser is deployed, what happened to the airflow? Well, the air now is not going through the engine producing forward thrust anymore, it is producing a backward thrust. It is not being completely reversed, the air is thrown sideways in an angle that is part sideways, part forward, but it's okay, it's helping the airplane to stop anyway. So the deceleration now is a little bit higher, say 8 knots per second. The auto brake system will feel this higher deceleration level and will release pressure from the brakes, say to 1500 psi, to go back to the 7 knots per second target that he was programmed to do. If, for instance, this airplane had a parachute, once the parachute was deployed, the deceleration rate would be so high that the system will release any pressure from the braking line. Well, before jumping into any conclusions right now, let's go into a real airplane example. The Boeing 737NG has four different levels of auto brake, one, two, three, and maximum. On my right, you'll see the deceleration rate targets for each level of the auto brake system. This deceleration level is reached by aerodynamic drag and some amount of brake pressure. But it's important to say that if the pilot should put a uh, very big effort on the brakes, he or she will always be able to reach a higher deceleration level than any of the auto brakes. Now let's add to this graphic the thrust reverse system. If you look at the maximum manual braking, yes, the thrust reverser actually increased the, the deceleration rate. But if you look at the auto brake, the deceleration rate is still the same with the thrust reverser as it was without it. All the thrust reverser did was reduce the brake pressure on the system. Conclusion. No, the thrust reverser does not change the actual landing distance at all if we are using auto brake. And it will change if we are not using auto brake, we are using maximum manual brake. Well, not quite. I said to you it depends on two different things, the auto brake system that I have just explained and the runway condition. So all the data that I have shown you so far is from a dry runway condition. Take a look at the wet runway now. When the runway is now wet or even worse, slippery, the braking coefficient between the tire and the pavement is now drastically reduced. Well, if it is dr drastically reduced, it is likely that you will not be able to achieve the maximum auto brake target. And why is that? The anti-skid system will actuate to prevent wheel lock. And to prevent wheel lock, no matter how much pressure you put on the braking line, the anti-skid system will release some pressure to keep the wheel spinning. And this will create an interesting situation. In this particular scenario here, the maximum manual brake capability is now equal to the maximum auto brake capability. And yes, thrust reverser is increasing both deceleration rates. For lower auto brake settings, however, such as one or two, there was no difference at all. 
And for an intermediate outer break setting such as 3, there is a significant gain using thrust reverser, but is not as much as it is with auto brake system in maximum setting or maximum manual brake. To sum up, a real conclusion now. Say the runway is dry and you're using auto brake. No thrust reverser will not change the actual landing distance, it will just reduce brake wear. If you're using manual braking, yes, the thrust reverser will help you to stop in a shorter distance. Now suppose you are on a wet runway. Wet runway with low levels of auto brake, no, the thrust reverse systems will probably not affect the landing distance. But if you have a higher auto brake setting, as well as if you are manually braking the airplane, yes, the thrust reverser will decrease the actual landing distance after touchdown. Before showing you the last thing I want to show you about thrust reverser, let me tell you that all the content of this video and so much more is on this book, Aircraft Performance Weight and Balance. It's available to purchase worldwide in digital format and on paper via Amazon. If you got interested, please check the link on the description below. Well, as I promised, there is one last thing, and I want to show you the engineering behind the thrust reverse system of a 737 as an example. When the sleeves are stalled, the bypass air is being directed backwards. The first detent of the thrust reverse on the throttle will deploy the sleeves. This is called the interlock detent while the sleeves are moving backwards. And once they are open, we refer to the same throttle position as first detent or even idle detent. Now, the bypass air, as I said, is being redirected in an angle, part sideways, part forward. But the air that is passing through the engine core is still going backwards. The pilot is finally able to accelerate the engine and there are two detents to be used on the 737. We call them second detent and max detent. Well folks, I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you did, please let me know in the comments below. Also, take this chance to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. Follow me on my social media. Thanks a lot, and see you next time.